By now, the whole world knows about climate change. Everyone knows that the Earth is heating and heating up. And this global warming has caused glaciers to melt and sea levels to rise. With this rise in temperature, atmospheric patterns have shifted, causing terrible typhoons, devastating floods, and destructive droughts that are now more and more frequently in the news. Because of the familiarity, we might be lulled into taking all these disasters for granted and go on with our daily lives as usual. And if we do, it is predicted that our life support systems will collapse in 28 years. The United Nations sounded the alert in 2016 that if the planet's temperature will rise 2 degrees Celsius beyond pre-industrial levels, consequences will be unimaginable. It calculated that if we are not to go beyond this temperature rise, the world must be carbon neutral by 2050. This means our enormous carbon emissions must be balanced by our carbon sinks. How is the world responding? The UN asked its member countries to do their part to calculate its nationally determined contributions to climate and to take steps to lower it. This task falls on the Climate Change Commission. The local government units likewise must formulate their own local climate action plans. But it is the actions of each of us as individuals and groups that make up the sum of our country's contribution to climate. Thus, in 2020, after consultations among civil society groups, the Ako Ang Bukas was born. It is a movement that calls for a whole of nation endeavor, calls on our sectors at all levels to do their share. At the heart of the movement is a campaign to lower our respective carbon footprint and then, knowing the numbers, take steps to lower it so that our country will be carbon neutral by 2050. Here is a sample. In this video, I'll walk you through how to use the Ako Ang Bukas Greenhouse Gas Calculator for households. When you open the calculator, the first thing that you will see is the introductory tab. In there, you'll find the basic description of the calculator and which aspects of your lifestyle are considered in computing your carbon footprint. These are transportation, electricity, cooking, and the generation of your waste. The next tab is where you will fill up all the information required to compute your household carbon footprint. All you need to do is fill up all the highlighted cells. Some of the cells are drop-down lists, so you just need to select which information you would like to nominate. Let's give it a try, shall we? For my region, I've put Luzon. For my municipality, I've put Quezon City. For the number of people in my household, I've put four. On the average monthly consumption, looking at our bills, it's around 200 kilowatts per hour. Don't worry if in your case you don't know your average monthly consumption, but you have an idea of how much you pay every month, you can choose to include the cost in pesos instead of the consumption in kilowatt hours. For this part, you'll need to put down the number of appliances in your house. How many electric fans do you have? How many TVs? How many laptops? Moving on to the cooking part. For cooking, you will be asked what type of fuel you use. Most households use LPG tanks, so let's go with that for this example. The most common size of an LPG tank is 11 kilograms, but you can also opt to double check this on the label of your own LPG. Next, we need to indicate the number of days it takes before we replenish our LPG tank. For example, if you replace it once a month, you put in 30 days. Do you use charcoal at home for cooking? No? Then we put no and we leave the part where it asks us about the kilograms blank. Same goes for firewood. 
This next section is on waste. Do you recycle your food and garden waste? Indicate yes if you do. Do you collect your recyclable waste or give it to your community through the recyclables collecting system? Say yes if you do, no if you don't. How much of your waste is collected by the dump trucks? What do I mean? For example, if you throw away any residual waste in your trash can, it's collected by the dump truck and brought to the landfill site. So for an estimate per day, let's say 1 kilogram. Next, we're going to look at your waste profile. What type of waste profile do you have? Do you usually throw away a lot of plastic or paper or maybe other materials? For this example, we've indicated mostly food waste with a little bit of plastic and a little bit of paper. Next, we're going to look at your transportation. If you go to the school or the office, include the number of trips per week for your household. You can include as many people in your household as you want. For example, I go to the office from Monday to Friday. So I put down five days per week from Quezon City to Ortigas, and then I put down the mode of my transportation, which is a UV Express at an estimated distance of 20 kilometers. As you can see here, we have a drop-down list, and that makes our calculator pretty unique. You can see on that list some transportation modes that are unique to the Philippines like the LRT, the MRT, the rented motorcycles, um, the tricycles, and the GP. You won't find those emission factors in the calculators that were made by foreign entities. We're now down to the last question for this tab. It's pretty easy. All we have to do is count the number of trees planted or existing in your property. Then we also count the number of trees planted or existing outside of your property. And with that, we're all done. We've completed the data requirements and we're now ready to check out our results. Alright, let's check out our results. So in the green box on the upper left of the screen, we can find the total carbon footprint of the entire household, which is 2,546 kilograms. Now remember, we indicated at the start that our sample household has four members. So in the yellow box underneath, we're looking at the carbon footprint per person, which is at 30, 637 kilograms, way below the Philippine average of 1,980 kilograms. But remember, we only indicated the transportation mode for one person. We can probably expect a higher value if we placed enough for four. If you look at the pie chart, you'd be able to see which of your activities contribute the most to your carbon footprint. Based on the sample data that we provided, the bulk of our carbon footprint is coming from our electricity consumption. Remember, the goal is to be carbon neutral, meaning that our carbon footprint should be equal to the carbon we are able to sequester every year. So if my household has a carbon footprint of 2,546 kilograms and I manage to offset it with the trees outside my property by 217 kilograms, it's still not balanced, it's not neutral. To be able to offset my carbon footprint, I will need to plant 75 more trees. Or I could plant 50, but I would need to reduce my carbon footprint in other ways. For example, instead of driving to work, I could ride a bike or do carpool. As simple as that. Join the campaign. Register at tinyurl.com slash AAB calculator. Let's do it. The Advisory Council of Acombucas enjoins everyone. To carbon neutrality in 2050. Quantum leap now. Climate neutrality 2050. Climate neutrality by 2050. Climate neutral Filipinas by 2050. Quantum leap now. Climate neutrality 2050. Quantum leap now towards climate neutrality 2050. Quantum leap now to climate neutrality 2050. So do a Coambucas champion. Let us all together make a quantum leap now to climate neutrality in 2050. And where does change begin? All change, my friends, begins within. Sa bawat isa sa atin, nag-uumpisa ang pagbabago. 
mga kaibigan, lalo na kayong mga kabataan, nasa sa inyong kamay ang inyong kinabukasan. Ako ang bukas. 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 Isa isa ang bukas. Ako ang bukas. Ako ang bukas. Ako ang bukas. So does Greta Thunberg. I wanted to act as if the house was on fire because it is.